to my channel. My name is Cheryl. Thank you very much for joining me. If you're a new viewer, hello, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Hello. Okay, so first of all, I apologize for the quality of this video because the camera is pixelated. I don't know why. I, I'm hoping it'll turn out. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, next, this video is to be uh, kind of a mixed sort. It's got some bookish things in it, a lot of bookish things in it. It's also got some craftiness in it. So grab a drink of your choice and let's get started. Okay, so I am in my room this time. I'm going to move the camera because, you know, it's not a Cheryl Gilmore video without me moving the camera and making you seasick. So I don't have anything on my walls. Can you tell? <laughs> I do have some pictures over there, but we're doing this in my room today because I don't know why I just am. We're doing it that way. My hair is a mess. I apologize. So, let's get started. If you can hear the noise of the cars, I apologize. I'm sitting by an open window. I apologize. Um, hopefully you can't hear it too bad. Look at my nails. Aren't they cute? It's a little book with glasses and it says dream on it. Isn't that cute? I love it. I got my nails done. If you live in Maple Ridge, go to Diva's Hair and no, Diva's Nails, I think it's called. It is so cool. It's at Haney Place Mall. I love that place. They are so nice and they do such a good job. Anyways, I got a pedicure too and it was really relaxing. Okay, so we're going to start with some craftiness. I don't have um, a lot of finished objects. You know what? I'm going to put my camera back up here. If you know, um, I mean, you know that my camera is just my webcam because I can't afford a camera. So, <laughs> it's not a very good quality. Let's start. Okay, so, if you've been watching my channel for a while, like for the last year or two, <laughs> you will know that I was working on a blanket for my dad and stepmom. I picked a dishcloth pattern and I was making a bunch of those dishcloths in acrylic yarn and making a pattern, a blanket. I didn't like how it was looking. I didn't like the way I connected them. I didn't like the colors I chose. I just didn't like it. It didn't look good at all. So I scratched it and I started again. Yeah, because it only took me two years to do the first part. I mean... But I finished the first row and I'm on the second row now. So let me show you what I have. So I decided to do um, two row, one row of red and white alternating, then two rows of, um, and then one row of light pink, no, bright pink and then light pink alternating and then another row of light pink and then bright pink alternating and doing that through all the colors up. So, does that make sense? I don't know. If you know this pattern, um, I can link it below. It's a free dishcloth pattern. It's a little heart. Can you see the heart? There's the heart. So, I've got this done. So, I've got the top. Um, or actually this is the bottom. There's the bottom. And then I've got this. I got two pinks done. And I got the red and white done. So, yeah, I think it looks good. I like how I connected them this time. I just used the whip stitch, I believe. And I think it looks a lot better. I think it's called the whip stitch. I'm not sure. But if you look at this side, that's how I connected them. So I like this blanket. I think it looks a lot better. I think I planned out the colors a lot better. So I meant for the red and white to be the top. But I think I have it as the bottom because I've got it upside down. So it's going to be the bottom. I might put red and white on the top as well. We'll see. But I'm going to do two rows of pinks, two rows of blues, two rows of purples, and two rows of green. Maybe not green, I'm not sure. And then possibly put another another row of red and white on top. 
No, purple. Did I say purple? I need to do purple, too, because that's one of her favorite colors. So, purple, pink, blue, and then red and white. So, I was getting done. I did all these in the last, like, two weeks, so. Very happy with that. Then I purchased a pattern just the other day, about a week ago. I purchased a pattern. I forget what it's called. Oh my goodness, I forget what it's called. I'm really prepared, aren't I? Hold on, I have it um, set up on my computer. I can just go check. It is called the Richland, the Richland, um, what is it called? Richland Shawl? Hang on. It's just called Richland. It's a lace shawl pattern by D. O'Keefe. I will link the Ravelry page below, in the description box below. And it is a beautiful shawl, and I loved it. And so I bought the pattern. It was like, how much was it? $8 Canadian, I think, so not too bad. And I started it. I can't put a picture of the shawl up because I don't edit. I don't know how to edit. If if any of you are watching who have a YouTube channel, if you know how to put a picture up in the corner, could you let me know on how to do that? Because I can't figure it out. I don't know how to put a picture of like a book or of a pattern or something up in the corner, and I don't know how to do that. So if you have a YouTube channel and you know, could you let me know? I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Because I can't figure it out. So this pattern is really cute. So I started it. I'm using this yarn. Um, my room is a total mess. I barely have any room to walk in here. So I had, I took off the band and I don't know where I put it. So I apologize. No, I think I threw it away. I mean, that's one thing I think I actually threw away and didn't just put on my floor. Horrible. But it's very pretty. It's sparkly. Got it from Walmart. So, here it is, which is the right side. I think this is the right side. Can't really tell, but there's... Okay. So, you start on this side, on this corner. And then it goes up here. And there's some ridges there, like that. And it's just so pretty. Look at the big long ridge here. It goes like that. It's just so pretty. And then this side's pretty too. It's got, oh, you just gotta see it in real life. It's really pretty. So, I mean, you can see all the ridges, the like different things here, like right, right here are bumps. And it's just so pretty. So I started that. There's like six charts to do the whole thing, and I'm not doing the chart. They, in the pattern, there's also the written pattern, so that's cool because I don't like charts. <laughs> and um, there's six charts and six written parts, and then some of the charts you do twice. So I'm on chart three on my second time doing it, chart three. So then I go into chart four. I call it chart, but that's what they call it for the written pattern too, so it's just separate sections, like section three is chart three, so I'm very excited to work on that. I'm really enjoying it. It's a really, a quite an easy pattern. I'm learning new stitches. She explains how to do the stitches. She um, leaves links in the pattern to uh, for video help on video tutorials on how to do the stitches, really good video tutorials. I really enjoy it. It's a really good pattern. I learned how to do the right twist, which gives you these little ridges right there. Um, what else did I learn? There was another stitch I learned. I don't remember what it was now, but I do have extra holes. I have this hole right here that I don't think is supposed to be there. I messed up a couple times, but I'm proud of it. I'm really proud of it. So. I really don't think this hole is supposed to be here, but, you know, I'm enjoying it. I'm using size four millimeter hooks, I believe, or not hooks, needles. This is knitted on circular needles, 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 circular needles. That's a new word, people. You heard it here first, needles. 
Then I'll be making a dishcloth. So um, I just started this yesterday. I'm making it in Christmas colors. So this is just the um, um, corner to corner. What is what is that pattern called? It's by PJ something. Can't think of the last name. PJ something. <laughs> and it's the um, Nana's favorite or Grandma's favorite dishcloth. Something like that. It's just the corner to corner one. I've been doing that. Then I've been making, thinking about making some baby things for, um, for our local hospital as a Christmas gift. Make some baby things to donate. So I did make some hats, but I can't find them because I wasn't, I don't have a place to put them yet. So they're kind of all over and I couldn't find them. But, um, I did make... I just have four more rows to go on this. This is an angel baby blanket, which is for babies that die, um, that are born way premature and pass away, unfortunately. So I am making that. And this is it right here. I think I made it too small, actually, now that I'm looking at it. But... This pattern is just, I just made it up myself. It's knitted, it's acrylic yarn, and I just did four rows of ribbing, which was knit one, purl one. And then I just did um, stockinette. I knit one row and purl the next all the way up. So, yeah, I don't know what color it is. It's obviously, it's purple. It looks kind of blue on the pattern on the computer, but it's purple. I don't know. I have the sizes of Angel Baby blankets, um, but I didn't measure this yet, so I'll have to do that. Yeah, and I made. Um, hang on, where'd it go? Where did the finished one go? Uh, do, 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 do. Up oh, here we go. I made some baby slippers. So I made one pair. One pair is almost done. I will link the pattern below. It is a loom knitted pattern. It is loom footsies, I believe, or little footsies, something like that. And it's, I haven't weaved in the ends, but it's just a cute little, little sock. So cute for newborns. I finished the next one in that pair, but I haven't taken it off the loom yet. This is the flower loom. 12 um, pegs. <coughs> oh, sorry. I really like loom knitting. So if you haven't tried it, you should. I really enjoy it. And that's all my whips and finished objects. So, um, let's get started with the bookish things, shall we? My hair is a mess. Oh my goodness. So, I have a small haul and also a library haul. So um, we'll start with the haul of the books I bought. So, excuse me, they are these ones. I got three of them from Book Outlet. No, two of them from Book Outlet. This one I got from Book Outlet. It's called The Revenge of Magic by James Riley. And James Riley wrote another series called the Story Thieves series, which the first book I got from the library as well. But this series is a, another series by him, and it's a middle grade. Um, I don't know what it's about. Um, oh, I bent it, darn it. Uh, oh, right. Books of magic were discovered in various sites around the world alongside the bones of dragons. Only those born after Discovery Day have the power to use the magic. Now on a vacation in Washington, D.C., Fort Fitzgerald's father is lost when a giant creature bursts through the earth attacking this... I mean, this is all fantasy. I'm just enjoying it. I just... I have no idea what it's about, really. I'm just excited to read it. I don't like knowing what books are about before I go into them. I like being mysterious and not knowing, so I apologize if I go through these books fast and I don't tell you what they're about, but I don't know and I don't want to know. So that book I bought... Then I also bought this book because I saw the cover and it was a total cover buy. I have no idea what it's about. Wild and Crooked by Leah Thomas. 
it's, I believe, a YA book, I think. Don't know what it's about. Let's see if it says anything. Uh, Kaylin Spence's name is inseparable from the brutal murder her father committed when he was a teenager. Oh my goodness, it's starting over. And it's all about her life with a dad that murdered as a teenager. That's exciting. I mean, it's not exciting, but sounds good. <laughs> sounds interesting. So, and there's handcuffs right there. Is that handcuffs? Those are handcuffs. That looks interesting. So, that book. And then I bought the, I believe this is the fourth or fifth, no, book four in the Keeper Lost Series, Cities, Keeper of the Lost Cities. There we go. Um, by Shannon Messenger. I have all of the books, I think, now. I just haven't read them. I've only read the first book. So this is about a girl named Sophie. And she, uh, in the first book, she finds out that she is an elf. And she has special powers. So she gets taken to the elf world. And she's learning, trying to figure out who she is, where she came from, why was she on Earth, that kind of thing. And it's full of mis full of some mysterious things and fantasy things. It's got fantasy creatures. It's just a wonderful series. It's middle grade. I love it. So, yeah. I'm going to have to read that series soon. I don't know if I have this book yet. I know I'm missing one book. But right now, all my, my bookshelf fell down. Side note. So I've got all my books all over the floor right now, and I'm trying to sort them out. It's taken a long time, so I don't know what books I have of this, but I think I've got all of them now. And then, the last one I bought, I am very, very excited about. This one is called, this, this is one of my favorite YA authors. Contemporary authors. And I've only read three of her books, but I have all five or six of her books. I actually talked about her in um, the the live video I did with Elizabeth from Lizzie Phelos Books. I talked about Morgan Matson. This is her newest book, Take Me Home Tonight by Morgan Matson. And I am so excited to read this book. I saw an interview with her on a YouTube channel. I forget whose YouTube channel, but it was so good. And, um, this book sounds so good, right up my alley. I'll show you the naked. First of all, it's got this in the in the cover, and then look at that. It's pink, pink, shiny pink lettering. I mean, it's gorgeous. That's just gorgeous. And then in the back of the cover, because if you read Morgan Matson, you know she always has to have a dog in her books. And there's a cute little Pomeranium. Isn't he so cute? So, I'm excited. This book is about two girls who um, want to go to New York for a fun evening. They want to go and they, they, I think they sneak out. I'm not sure. They're teenage girls. They go to New York where they want to go to a show and a dinner and then come home. They have to be home by midnight for some reason. I don't know why. Probably curfew. And... They go there and everything goes wrong. That's all I know and I'm excited. I know that they lose their phones because I mean, how can you, I mean, I had to go a day without my phone the other day because my charger, I lost my charger. It, uh, let me tell you, it was hard. It was very difficult to go a day without your phone. Have you ever tried that? It's, it's not fun, it's not fun. So I'm very excited to read that. Okay, so those are the books I bought. This one I bought from Amazon. Now, for my library haul, I have quite a few books. I have The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. This is a middle grade mystery series. I'm looking forward to reading it. I don't know anything about it, but it looks cute. Hey, this book I've started on audio, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss. I am loving it. Loving, loving. This is about the daughters of, like, um, can't think of names. Like Jekyll and Hyde and, and um, 
um, um, um, um, vampire, what's his name, Dracula and all of them. It's the daughters of those creatures. And they're trying to solve a mystery. I don't know what the mystery is yet, but I'm very excited to read this. I also got the next two books in that series. The second one, this is a huge book. This is European Travel of Monstrous Gentlewomen by Theodore Goss. This is the second book in the series. And look how thick this baby is. That is thick. So that's the second book. And then the third book, which seems kind of silly because it's smaller. It's like really small. And it is The Sinister Mystery of the Mesmerizing Girl. That is the third book. And look how skinny that it is compared to the second book. I mean, look. Let me show you. Second book, third book. I mean, <laughs> who knows? But okay, we'll, we'll deal with that. So I'm looking forward to reading that series. I'm enjoying it so far. Then I have the third book in the Train to Moscow Places novel, which is a middle grade. This one is Delivery to the Lost City by P.G. Bell. I am almost finished it. I am enjoying it very much. This book is about, what's her name? I'm so bad at names. Susie. Susie. And um, in the first book, which was The Train to the Possible Places, she, um, a train shows up in her, her living room and she stows aboard it and ends up in this fantasy land, this place in the moon, on the moon basically, where there's different worlds and it's just so much fun. So I'm looking forward to finishing that one. I'm almost done it. I'm on page 187. And there's 300, about 400 pages. So not quite done. I've got about 300, 250 pages to read or so. Hopefully finish that today. Then I got this series I used to read as a teenager and I loved it. And I, I used to own a bunch of them, but I gave them away. And now I'm really mad about that, which is why I don't like getting rid of books. <clears throat> Sorry. I don't like getting rid of books because I always regret it sooner or later. So this is the Christy Miller collection. These are, this is volume three, which is book seven to nine. Christy Miller, this is by Robin Jones Gunn. Christy Miller is a young girl in the series um, dealing with school and first love and God and everything. It's a Christian fiction. Um... This, the books involved in this is True Friends, Starry Night, Seventeen, and Wishes. And I got this because I think the book Seventeen was my favorite book. No, Seventeen Wishes. That's what it's called. I think that was my favorite book out of the whole series. So, I'm looking forward to reading this. Then, like I said, I got the first book, Story Thieves by James Riley. Now this book is interesting. It's about um, a boy and girl who can jump into books and the girl's trying to find her father who is a um, fictional character and he got stuck in a book and she has to go find him and it's just so good. It reminds me of the, the Tilly and the Book Wanderers but I'm really enjoying this too so I started this one on audio. I'm about halfway done, so I'm looking forward to finishing that. This book I finished yesterday, and oh my goodness, I could not put it down the last 150 pages. Karen Kingsbury, A Distant Shore. Now, Karen Kingsbury writes Christian hard-hitting romance and fiction. And this is her newest book. Excuse the, the little sticker that says Seven Day Loan. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> this book broke me. It was so good. Usually her books are hard hitting, but this one she took to a whole new level and I'm saying I am here for it. So this book has a lot of trigger warnings in it. If you want to see my review, I will try and remember to link my um, Goodreads page below where the review is. I did kind of a lengthy review on this book. Um, this book is about uh, sex trafficking of children in Belize. And um, it, I cried. It was beautiful. It's got a romance in it. Um, I don't even know where to start. 
so it's very disturbing when you know what's going on and that it happens in real life, the human trafficking, but it's a book full of hope and God's love and God's hope and God's redemption. And um, it's just a beautiful book with a gorgeous romance. It's got God in it, um, which I mean, just was beautiful if you're a Christian. And even if you aren't a Christian, this book is really a beautiful book. It does have quite a bit of Bible verses in it. In the beginning of each chapter, there's a Bible verse, which I loved personally. Um, there is a, a lot about talking about God in this book. I really enjoyed it. If you are a Christian, pick this book up. As long as it doesn't bother you trigger-wise learning about human trafficking. It doesn't get graphic because this is a Christian book. So it doesn't get graphic, but it sh it tells and shows enough that you know what's going on. And it's, it's um, really rough to read about. But in the end, it's just so good. So good. I gave this five stars. I would give it six stars if I could. It was just the best book. Every time I read a Karen Kingsbury book, I think it's my favorite. This one, I think, really is my favorite. I love this. I want to buy this book. Um, next month, when I get my next check, I'm definitely buying it. So, love this book. Totally recommend. Okay. Uh, I'll show that one. Then I got Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I don't know if I'm going to read this or not. I'm not sure, but um, I don't really know what this is about. It's a YA, I believe. I've just heard things about it. Um, I know it's been compared to The Night Circus, which is another book that I put on hold from the library, so who knows? We'll see. Then I got some cozy mysteries. I got Lauren, Lauren Bear, Laureen Berenson, Bite Club. This is a Melanie Travis, Travis book. This book, um, this whole series is about a woman named Melanie Travis who is a show dog owner and um, she solves mystery. She's an amateur thief, amateur thief, amateur sleuth, not thief, sleuth. And um, uh, it all involves dogs. So I'm really enjoying that series. I got more of those from the library as well. I'm going to have to show them in another haul because they're way over there. I forgot to bring them, but they're just paperbacks. Then I got... Um, where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. I have heard this book is so good, so I got it. I don't know what it's about. I've just heard it's really good. So I got it. This is an adult book um, about a child protagonist. Um, I believe she lives in the swamps and gets accused of murder. That's all I know. I'm here for it. So yay. I got two middle grades. Tristan Strong punches a hole in the sky. By, I don't know if I'm saying this name right, Kwame Balia or Malia. I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name. I apologize. It's M B A L I A. Um, but this sounds like an This is a Rick Riordan Presents book, I believe. Yes, it is. And it involves African um, legends and African. Um, uh, gods and stuff, so I'm looking, I don't think it has African gods, but African legends and um, come to life, and I'm just, I'm looking forward to reading that. I don't know much about African legends and African, the African way of life, so I'm looking forward to that. This one is the second book in the series, Tristan Strong Destroys the World. It's wonderful to see um, black protagonists um, taking over a lot of the middle grade and YA books. I'm loving that. Oh, it's kind of shiny. And I'm learning a lot about the African um, history and the way of life and how African Americans live and um, the things they go through. I mean, it's just horrendous what they go through. Even now in 2021, it's just ridiculous. So I'm, 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 can't say I'm enjoying learning about their struggles. <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but I'm, I'm, enjoying getting the lessons and 
in educating myself about it. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Okay, do we have any more? What is this one? No, we did that one. That is it. Did we do this one? We did that one. We're done. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry this is a long video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and let me know because that lets uh, the algorithm know that you enjoyed it and it recommends, YouTube then recommends people my channel. So give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day. Let me know what you're reading down below. If you're excited for me to read any of these books, what you think of the authors and the books that I chose. Um, anything you want to talk about, if you want to talk about the craftiness, let me know what you're knitting or crocheting and or loom knitting or diamond painting. Whatever you would like to talk about, I would love to talk to you about it. So just leave a comment below. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a great day. God bless you and all you do. Bye guys.